My name's Jeff Regan. I get ten a day in expenses from a detective bureau run by a guy named Lyon. Anthony J. Lyon. They call me the Lion's Eye. With Jack Webb starred as Jeff Regan, investigators stand by for trouble, suspense, and adventure in tonight's story of the man who liked the mountain. Well, this is the way it started. It was about six o'clock last Monday night. I was home, cooling myself off when the phone began jumping around on top of the desk. Jeff? Mm-hmm? This is Melody. Mr. Lyon calling. I'm out. You can't find me. That's no attitude. Here he is. Hey, hey, Melody. Regan, I got a job for you to do. You can tell me all about it tomorrow morning. So long. Now, wait a minute. It's got to be taken care of now, tonight. Look, I worked hard all day. I'm tired. Right, Get somebody else. I told you 15 minutes. Now, take this down. Office and tap building right by your place. He's an attorney, name of Collins Knight. Collins Knight? What rock did you look under for him? I don't be smart just because the guy serves a little time once. And gets himself disbarred and re-entered and tied up with every piece of gambling from here to Reno. I'm not interested in who they are, what they've done, as long as they can pay the bills. And Collins Knight is just the baby who can do it. So hop over there and find out what's what. And call me if you run into any trouble. <laughs> Collins Knight, attorney at law, Taft Building. Turned out to be a medium-sized man, about 50, in a loud tan sport coat and black and white polka dot tie. The good tailoring on his shoulders didn't cover up that 45-year-old stomach, but it didn't seem to bother him. He smiled when I walked in his office, pulled out a bottle of bonded stuff and a couple of tall glasses. Sit down, Regan. Make yourself comfortable. Say when. When? Hmm. I'm a four-finger man, too. Yeah. Here's to you. Cigar? I don't use them. You, you don't mind if I do. Yeah. Now then, I asked you to come here because I want you to find Big Ed Kittredge for me. Been missing three days, according to his wife. From pictures, I've seen a Big Ed. He'd be a hard man to miss. Yeah, I figure the same way, Regan, but he's been gone for three days, and I think someone's either cooled him off or he's lambed. Why do you think somebody cooled him? Oh, a man like Big Ed's bound to have a lot of enemies, for one reason or another. Why do you think he lambed? For one reason or another. Friend or enemy? Neither. I just know the guy. It's one of my people. I handle a couple of things for him. His wife is worried about him. I didn't know people like Big Ed had wives. Well, they do. At least Ed does, and a darn cute little girl she is. Inez. Yes, very pretty little girl. Tell me about him. He's gone. What about his wife? Where'd he meet her? When'd he marry her? I gotta have something. I don't know. Well, I'll have to see her. Okay, see her. You don't much care whether I find Big Ed or not, do you? Nope. Thanks for the drink. Are you, uh... Don't like me, do you, Regan? No. Nope. Most people don't. So long, Shamus. Keep in touch. The name on the door said Mr. and Mrs. Edward Kittredge. It was a clean door in a clean hall with a nice new carpet on the third floor of an apartment house over on Franklin. I figured a hundred bucks and up for a bachelor. This was pretty red hair. The mahogany kind. Green eyes. 24, maybe. But she could look 16, just coming off the beach and wearing those gold sandals. Yes? Miss Kittredge? Hi, my name's Kittredge. My name's Regan. I'm a private detective. Collins Knight hired me. He said your husband's missing. Oh, come in, Mr. Regan. I told him I'd want to talk to you. Okay if I sit down? Oh, of course. Of course. I'm sorry, Mr. Regan. Can you tell me anything about him? His friends? Business? You ever heard of Big Ed Kittredge? Oh, yeah. He's been around. Makes the papers now and then. You know what kind of friends he might have. What about his business? I love Mr. Regan. I was hopping cars in Glendale three years ago. The movie contract they brought me out from Iowa to keep wasn't anything more than a lot of talk. And I had to eat. 
One day, a big man came in. I waited on him. Big Ed? Yeah. After that, he kept coming in. I began going out with him. When he asked me to marry him, I married him. I didn't ask him what he did for a living or how he spent his time. He was good to me. He's always been good to me. Now he's gone. Mm-hmm. He's never been gone more than five hours since we were married. He gave me everything, done everything for me. Then you don't ask questions. And I don't ask questions. But there's one thing. Yeah? Yeah, a partner here, a man named Axman was here two nights ago. That was the night Ed left. He'd never come back. Axman? Yeah. They was in the kitchen. I was in the bedroom. I thought I heard him quarrel. And when he came out, Axman had his hat in his hand. He was leaving. Ed went with him. Mm-hmm. That it? Well, yeah, that's it. I ain't seen him since then. Think anything's happened to him? You think he's all right? I think you ought to tell me the truth. What? All the pictures I've seen in the paper of Big Ed Kittredge of a big man with a pipe in his face. I don't see any pipe racks around here, but I see where they might have been. Why, you... And if I went to that closet, I bet I wouldn't find any of Ed's clothes around here either. Now, come on. Tell me about that argument. All right, you win, Peter. The same thing we've been arguing about for three years. He drinks too much. He plays the horses too much. And besides, he socked me. Mm-hmm. Go on. I finally got fed up. Told him to get out. Only now you want him back. Why? Just long enough to save him some divorce papers and get a property settlement. I thought it'd be something like that. Oh, no, wait a minute, Ring. Wait a minute. About Axman, I wasn't lying. He hates Ed, even if they are partners. Something from the old days. Axman walked in when Ed and me was having our knockdown. He saw it all. If he wanted to bump it, he could do it. Somehow he'd fix it so it looked like I'd done it. He's a kind. You think he'd make a good witness? Well, Axman's a smart guy. Now you... <laughs> it's the doorman and the clerk downstairs. They heard Ed and me arguing. We get kind of loud. Uh, I might have said something about killing Ed. Sure make me look sick if Ed turned up dead somewhere. Yeah, it would. You gonna help me? I'm already hired, lady. Thanks, Peter, thanks. Sorry I put on that act. Uh, you're pretty good. Wrong prop, that's all. I'd try that studio again if I were you. Yeah? Uh, that bunch of slobs, they would give no gal a break. Maybe you're right. <laughs> you ain't bad for a peeper. When this is all over, let's you and me have a drink somewhere or something, huh? Yeah, something. I'd like to meet a nice guy. A real nice guy, just one. <laughs> just one. Two minutes later, in front of the apartment house, I was lighting a cigarette and thinking over what Inez Kittredge had just told me when a soft hand belonging to the soft arm, body, and face of a little thug I knew named Louis Pacheco settled on my arm. Regan. Regan. All right, punk, what is it? Uh, I've been waiting for you, Regan. (laughs) Been with Big Ed's wife, huh? (laughs) Nice dish, huh? I seen it. Uh, I got some business with you, Regan. Yeah? Yeah. You're looking for Big Ed Kittredge, ain't you? Maybe. Yeah, then I could tell you something that'll help. All right, go on. Tell me. Ah, uh-huh. Now, without you giving me something from the trouble. How much can you tell me? Ah, uh, maybe what big it is. Okay, five. Ah, uh, tell somebody else. Suit yourself, punk. Uh, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Regan. Well? He, he shagged up the mountain town, yeah. Has a place up there called Hideaway. And not many people know about it, not even his wife. Yeah. He went up with a guy named Axman three days ago. Ed's got some slot machines and stuff like that up around there. That all? Yeah, that's enough for you, Gumshoe. Okay. Here. Hey. Eh? Uh, keep it. I don't need your lousy sawbuck. Keep it, you chiseling cheapskate. Cheapskate. <laughs> I don't care what kind of people are involved. I told you that before, and I'm telling you again. If they play rough, let them do it, just so we get paid. All right, fatso. Then get yourself somebody else to take over. I quit. No, no, no. Just a minute, Regan. Just a minute. Let's not fly off the handle about this thing. Now, be hasty. There are a bunch of bums, and you know it. Well, now, perhaps I was a bit indiscreet accepting a client like Collins Knight with his reputation and all that. It isn't only him. It's the man I'm supposed to find and his friend Axman and anybody else who knows him. Now, Jeffrey... I'm sure that a man of your talents could locate Ed Kittredge without any trouble. After all, Jeffrey, you've dealt with people like this before and always handled it admirably. Very admirably. I don't like it. 
Knight hires me to find Big Ed Kittredge. Only he doesn't care whether I find him or not. Big Ed's wife only wants to find him so she can slap a court order on him. And both of them tell me that Big Ed might be dead. Well, now let's not jump at their conclusions, Jeffrey. Well, I have to admit the whole thing looks fishy. Jeffrey, I want you to find Big Ed Kittredge as soon as you can. Look, I just told I you know, that I know, I know, but the fact of the matter is... I have an agreement with Knight in writing. You have and what? And you know what kind of a man he is. He's very tricky. He could close International if we don't stay on this case. If you don't stay on the case. Okay, you win. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jeffrey. Thank you. Expenses? Of course, of course. After I drive up to Mountain Town, I might find Big Ed up there. Mm -hmm, of course. Be careful, Jeffrey. Be careful and... Oh, uh, don't give me that phony line about calling you. Now, nah, Regan. Yeah? Call me if you run into any trouble. How far to Mountain Town? You're here, Pilgrim. Hmm? This is it. That black place over there is the lake. And that black place over there is the town. Cabins round the lake, no one round the town. Fill her up? Yeah, fill her up. Where can I get some coffee? I've been driving half the night. Thirty feet to your right and inside the door. Janie will fix you up. We're open all night. Thanks. No trouble? No trouble at all? You better look at that oil. Glad to. Tires and water. Glad to. You can move it if you want to. I'll be in getting coffee. Don't worry. Don't get enough business at one in the morning to stay open. I'm going to talk to the boss about it someday. Hey! Hey! Hi, dear, you're in town. I'm coming. Why do you want to hit the counter like that for? I'm co Well, I thought you was Eve. I didn't know it was a customer. Who's Eve? Him. Eve Holton that runs the station. What's yours? What's my what? Name. Well, as long as we're being formal, it's Regan. Jeff Regan. Oh, you're Janie. Well, say, how'd you know that? He told you. Well, say. How about some coffee, Janie? Huh? Oh, sure, sure. Um, you've been traveling far, Mr. Reed? From Los Angeles. Going far? Right here. This stump. You don't tell me you're going to be here this summer. A little while? Well, say. I'm off in an hour. I got a little cabin on the other side of the lake. Well, that's nice. Too much fishing? Fishing? <laughs> You're cute. Yes, I am. No, thanks. I'll take it black. Oh, what you gonna do here? Look for a man. Yeah? Say, what man? You might be able to help me, Janie. A cottage called Hideaway. A man named Kittredge. Big Ed Kittredge, you a friend of his? Car's already. Car's already, Pilgrim. Thanks. Janie. Don't you think you ought to go and see how the fire's doing? Hmm? What fire? Make one. Oh, all right, Eve, all right. Do you think as a girl takes a job singing hey, she has to listen to a lot of belongings and maybe she's lucky working with them? <laughs> Janie's too friendly. I like friendly people. Keep the car here, will you? Hmm? I'm looking for a hideaway cottage. I don't see any road going around the lake there. I guess I'll have to hoof it. Hideaway? Hmm? East shore of the lake. About half a mile from here. You're right, there's no road. You'll have to walk. Thanks. Don't mention it, Pilgrim. Don't mention it. Well, the cottage turned out to be an all-white, phony log cabin affair. I pounded on the door. Nobody answered. There was a sick kind of oil lamp burning inside, so I pounded on the door some more, and some more people didn't answer. When I put my hand on the latch, the door opened, people or no people, so I went in. Well, you can believe this or not, but somebody was there, right in front of the fireplace, only he was dead. And one whole side of his head was dark and shiny. It was still warm. Nope, you're wrong. It wasn't Big Ed Kittredge. This was a man I'd never seen before in my life. Return to Jeff Regan, investigator, in just a moment. 
An easy way to save for future security is by a payroll deduction of savings bonds. If you are not paid on a salary basis, you can purchase savings bonds at your nearest post office, bank, or savings and loan association office. Now is the time to ask your employer to start deducting for savings bonds or to buy a bond on your own. If no other plan is feasible, your bank will deduct enough each month from your savings or checking account to buy a savings bond. For money in the future, buy United States savings bonds. You'll be glad you did. And now, back to the story of the man who liked the mountain and Jeff Regan, investigator. Well, I stood there and looked at what was left of whoever he was. Wasn't anything in his pockets. Labels, cut off his suit, no laundry marks. Then I began looking around for a poker or a hammer or something. What I found was a heavy piece of kindling wood, and one end of it was stained. Then I heard somebody come in the door. I saw striped overalls, flashlight, and forty-five Colt revolver held by E. Fulton. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. He looked at the dead man, looked at me, looked at the piece of wood in my hand. Uh-huh. Dead. Yeah. Friend of yours? Never saw him before in my life. I did. Yeah? Name's Axman. Tom Axman. Friend of Big Ed Kittredge. Friend? Why'd you kill him? <laughs> I'll just take your gun. Mm-hmm. Safer this way. You always wrap a gun in a handkerchief? Only when I want to keep fingerprints on it. Evidence. So it's that way. Uh-huh. It's that way. You kill him? Uh-uh. <laughs> you did. There was a big fight. You conked him with that piece of wood, then shot him in the head. I saw it. My gun, my bullet, that's pretty neat. But he was still killed with this. Who's going to be able to tell? A good coroner. We got a lousy coroner up here. He don't know from nothing. That makes me the fall guy. You're it, Pilgrim. Let's go find ourselves a cop. <laughs> Eve waved his gun at me, and I started ahead of him for the door. Oh, he was good at doing frame-ups, and he was good at running things, but he was only an amateur when it came to pushing a man with a gun. I waited to feel it in my back. By the time I got to the door, it was there, and that was his mistake. I shoved him up against the wall, but he didn't drop the gun. Before he could do anything, I was running for the black place that he told me was the lake. Come back here, Regan! Come back here! I ran till I was out of breath. Take it easy, Jane. It's me. Uh huh. Oh. Oh, Mr. Regan, it's you. <laughs> hey, listen, he's looking everywhere for you. I know, I know. He says you killed a man, Tom Axman, over in Kittredge's cabin. I know. But you didn't kill him, I know that. Yeah? C- come on, we can't talk here. Someone will see us. This is my place. Boy, I got some things to tell you, Mr. Regan. I don't like this place, and I don't like Eve Holden, I don't like anything that's been going on. But... You gotta get out of here. Get out fast. Come on in. Look, I quit my job tonight. I didn't want to get mixed up in any of this. Any of what? This killing and... Gee, I don't know what all. Oh, I better pull the curtain. Someone might see you in here. This is a scary place. You say you know I didn't kill Axman. How? Well, I've been working in Mountain Town a couple of weeks now. And I've seen a lot of screwy things. Like what? Like Eve Holton. He works for Big Ed Kittredge. And Big Ed ain't no saint. Have you seen Big Ed? He drove up a couple of nights with that Tom Axman. I think Ed killed him. Yeah? They'd, they'd been drinking a lot, and they both talked kind of loud to eat. And Big Ed and Axman went over to the cabin. I didn't think anything of it till they didn't show up for something to eat the next morning. Ain't nothing to eat in that cabin. That helps, Janie. Go on. Well, Eve's been going up around that mountain taking a look every day for no reason at all. Yeah, sure he has. Well, he isn't looking at the mountain. Scared. Look, Mr. My Jalopy's out in back in the filling station. Take me with you. I'll tell everything I heard and seen it, and we can let some cops figure out all that. Hey, what's that? There was a hand firing a gun at her. It figured to be my gun. I hit the oil lamp and went down to the floor. Then I heard somebody outside on the porch. I crawled in the dark till I found a wall and a window. It wouldn't open, so I took half of it with me. Hey, 
Hey, hey, what is this? Come here, you. Now, look, punk. I just drove 85 miles in 100 minutes. Seven o'clock in the morning, and I haven't been to bed all night. I saw one dead man and one woman made dead. Easy on that stuff, Regan. And some of your playmates up at Mountain Town. Trying to make sure that I get hooked with it. Now, wait a minute. Oh, start talking, punk. Wait a minute. What, what do you want me to say? I don't know nothing about no stiffs and no Mountain Town. All right. But somebody like you comes sidling up to me and tells me where to find my man and doesn't take five bucks for it. That means he's already got dough. That's Regan. I... And they only give you dough for work. <laughs> Gee whiz, Regan, you know I wouldn't mix up in no killing. I, I can't stand that kind of thing. Punk, who paid you to tell me to go to Mountain Town? Who paid you to send me up there and make a patsy out of me? <laughs> let go, let go. I, I, I'll tell you, Regan, I'll tell you. It, it was Knight the lawyer. Yeah, yeah, Collins Knight. He slipped me 50 to pay you and give you the dope. Knight, I might have known. Go on. That's all. Honest, that's all there is to it. I... Tell you over to Big Ed's apartment. You talk to his wife and you know the rest. And I tell you why? You know, I never asked any questions. I just do what I get paid for. Nobody ever let me in on something big. I didn't know it was no frame. Okay, punk. Listen, if night ever finds out, I told you. Uh, shut up. What are you going to do? Hi, Regan. <laughs> Hard night, huh? Uh-uh. Easy, he, he made easy. me tell him. He made me tell him, Mr. Knight. Sure, easy. Well, don't worry about it. I got up early, Regan. Kind of figured you'd be looking up for Punk here. He phoned from Mountain Town, said you lambed out on him twice. <laughs> You're a pretty tough boy, aren't you? Here, Punk. Huh? Buy yourself something and forget you ever saw Regan, okay? Oh, sure, 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 Mr. Knight, sure. Okay, Regan, let's get going. Got a long drive ahead of us. I'll be able to drive it blindfolded someday. Someday. I'm still your patsy. Mm-hmm. I take you back there, and we call a cop. Now, come on. He will be getting anxious. Well, you can't say I didn't find my man. Even if I did find him sitting in that same cabin with a couple of corpses on the floor. Big Ed Kittredge. He needed a shave. He was sitting there looking at Axman's body and Janie. I guess Eve had brought her over from her place. Eve was there, too, holding my gun against Big Ed's back. Was still wrapped in that handkerchief. Knight, I thought you'd never get here. Come on, let's get this over with. Now, don't be nervous, Eve. Ed, I want you to meet Jeff Regan. He killed you. Hiya, boo. You're the fall guy, huh? Tough luck. Where'd you find him? Where I said I'd find him, at the punk. Still using my gun to kill people? Not quite finished, Pilgrim. Two down, one to go. Very easy to figure. I'm next, huh? Yeah. Sorry, Ed. It has to be business. Me and Eve will take over where you and Axe will leave off. Hey, Bo, we're going to let him rub me out and pin all this on you? We're going to do something about it. Take it easy, Ed. I think we ought to do something about it. Well, watch him eat me, too. Big Ed was good. He stopped the first two slugs from Eve's gun and the first two out of night. By that time, I got a hold of a poker and I brought it into Knight's face. He looked kind of sick and went down without a sound. When I looked around, Big Ed was twisting the gun from Eve's hand. Oh, Ed. Blood pouring from four holes in his chest. Well, we ain't so easy at that, huh? It's the frame won't work now. Where's your phone around here? I'll get you a doc. Uh, well, Sawbone so gonna help me save yourself from trouble. I never knew they burned like this. What's your name, Bo? Regan. I'm a private detective with International. Oh? Lions still run that dump? Yeah, he does. Oh, bomb, ain't he? <laughs> Night high, you'd find me? Yeah. He's real tricky. Well, they ain't making a patsy out of you, anyhow. Look, uh, Reagan, uh, I done you a favor. Fix, fix a deal for me, will you? Sure, Ed, sure. I, I, I got a wife named Inez. Met her. Pretty, huh? Look, uh, tell her, tell her I wasn't so all right. I didn't really leave it. I just came up here to let her cool off. I, I kind of like the mountain. That's why I. Had a place. (laughs) 
sure, I'll tell her. <laughs> oh, this is a bunk, ain't it? Reagan. I'm here, Ed. You found me, huh? Yeah, I found you. Yeah, lion's eye. Two bucks says lions won't give you no bonus for it. I... I Yeah, I guess you're right. Well, I called the sheriff who had a face like a boiled beet. He listened to the whole thing and then we kind of pieced it out together. You see, the day I got there, Big Ed killed Axman. I guess they got into some kind of an argument and Ed picked up a piece of kindling wood. About that time, Eve Holton showed up and saw what had happened and he figured he had something. So he pulled a gun on Ed and stuck him in a cellar somewhere. Then he phoned Knight down in Los Angeles. It was a good chance for Knight and Eve to take over. So they figured to kill Ed and get a fall guy for both murders. That was me. Didn't come out quite that way. Eve had to kill Janie, too. All with my gun. You know the rest. Oh, well, Lion Cash Knight's check. He was happy. Hey, uh, that sheriff up there's going to call you for the coroner's inquest this afternoon. Yeah, I know. Uh, technical charge of manslaughter. Yeah, they'll clear you in a couple of hours. Yeah. So Big Ed liked the mountain, did he? Imagine that big crook. Hey, where you going? Remember, you got to be up in Mountain Town this afternoon. I'll be there. I got to go over and see Big Ed's wife first. He asked me to tell her something. Big Ed's wife? That's right. Forget it, Regan. She's glad he's dead, same as everybody else. I'm going over to see Big Ed's wife. Why do you want to go sticking your nose back into it? Because Ed was dying and he asked me to do it. Lots of guys ask for lots of screwy things when they're dying. They wouldn't bring them up unless they were sure they didn't have to stick around and see what had happened. Make sense? Makes sense. Where are you going? Over to see Big Ed's wife. <laughs> At no time in our nation's history has it been more important to develop an outstanding Army medical department. Without an adequate nurse corps, this can't be accomplished. And nurses are still needed to fill the estimated requirements for 1948. If you are a graduate, registered nurse, over 21 and under 45, you are invited to apply for a commission in the Army Nurse Corps Reserve. If you are selected, you may choose either active duty or inactive status. Apply to the Adjutant General, Washington 25, D.C. Jack Webb is starred as Jeff Regan with Wilms Herbert as Anthony J. Lyon. It's CBS same time next week for hard-boiled action and mystery with Jeff Regan, Investigator. Also heard on tonight's program was Jeff Chandler, Betty Lou Gerson, Edgar Barrier, William Conrad, Sidney Miller, and Lorette Philbrand. Jeff Regan, Investigator, is written by E. Jack Newman, produced and directed by Sterling Tracy, with original music by Dick Aron. If you like mystery, here find that clue with mystery master Ken Crossan quizzing the top mystery writers of Hollywood and a special guest this Monday night over most of these same CBS stations. Here find that clue Monday night, 8.30, over most of these stations with Turhan Bay. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.